bull spread. The term bull implies that the investor expects the price of the underlying asset to appreciate. And the standard practice with bull spread is to use call options in order to execute that strategy. So here's a visual of what's going on. We expect the price of the underlying asset to appreciate over time, which is why we have that upward sloping blue line. So what the investor wants to do is uh, he wants to buy the stock at a lower price and then, of course, sell it at the higher price. So now what we need to do is we need to identify the call options that, are, that will enable the investor to execute each step of the trade. So to buy low, he would have to buy the call option that has lower strike price so that if he does exercise his call option, he would pay that lower strike and therefore buy the underlying asset. Now, to sell high, what the investor will do is he will short a call option. This way, if that call option does get exercised, the investor will have to deliver that underlying asset. But then when he delivers the underlying asset, it'll be at that higher strike price. So therefore, his objectives will have been met. So through the use of these two call options, it will enable him to buy at the lower price and therefore sell at the higher price. Now let's look at uh, an example that's got actual numeric values. So here we have two call options. One's got a strike of 70, the other one's got a strike of 75. And of course, the lower the strike price, the higher the premium. The question is, uh, which option should the investor be buying? Which one should he be selling? Well, you know, we've sort of uh, set the blueprint over here with our visual framework. He's going to long the call with a lower strike. So this is the lower strike. He's going to buy it, which means he has to pay the premium. On the other hand, uh, he will be shorting the call with a higher strike. So here's the higher strike. He'll be selling this. So he'll be earning $1 premium. So when you look at the combined uh, bull spread net premium, he ends up paying $3. And because he's paying, this is referred as a debit spread because he's paying it. On the other hand, if he was uh, receiving it, had it been a net receipt, then it would have been referred to as a credit spread. So just some terminology for your vocabulary. So in part one, what we want to do is we want to identify the critical points in this strategy. In critical points, there's three. What's the most we can make? What's the most we can lose? And what's the break-even price? So the way I approach this is step-by-step uh, -step or ground-up philosophy. So we're going to look at the profile for each individual component. Let's start off with the long position in call A. That's represented by line one here. And if I could just sort of retrace it, it would be this one that I'm squiggling. Right? So why is it like that? Well, first of all, that squiggly line is the profile for long call position. And the 70 is its strike price. So at any price above 70, you're making money. Step two, let's plot the short call. Well, a short call is represented by line two here. Let me just do the squiggly thing so you know exactly what I'm referring to. And that is the profile, ladies and gentlemen, for short call position. This is what it looks like. And you'll notice that the starting point or that intercept is that strike price uh, for call B, which is 75. Now in step three, what I'll do is uh, I'll find the combination of these two positions, but without first taking premium into account. So the way to do this, the simplest way to approach this is you start on the side of this uh, plane that only has one position. And I'll show you what I mean. So, at, um, so between 0 and 70, none of the options are active. But between 70 and 75, the only option that's active is call A. So I'm going to retrace that. But then when you get to 75, call option B also becomes activated. So then what you have here is a dollar gain here offset by a dollar loss there. So then what happens to the combination payoff is that it stays constant uh, in that price range. So that's how you get line three. Now what I like to do is uh, I like to label this plane as much as possible because uh, the more information I have on this plane, the easier it will be for me to answer any questions. So how did we um, how did we get to what's this level over here? Well, because these are all 45 degree angles, what you're going to get is a triangle. You're going to get a triangle. 
And as I said, because they're 45 degree angles, the two sides will have equal length, which means that this length here is the same as this length there. So that's how we get, that's how we get a gross value of $5. So if you're looking for uh, what the coordinate is uh, for line three, this would be five. And how did we get five? It's the same distance as there. Now the final step is to take the premium into account. Now when you do that, when you do that, you have to ask yourself, did I pay the net premium or did I receive the net premium? Well, as we determined early on, this $3, it was a net pay. So what's going to happen is the solid red line is going to shift down by three. And you see me doing that right here. So it's shift down by three. But you have to remember that the distance between the solid red line and the dash red line throughout is consistent because it's represented by the premium. So that means the gap between here and there is also three. And the distance from here to there is also three. So wherever you see a, a solid red line and a dashed red line, the gap is always three. Well, that helps a lot because uh, first of all, first of all, we already determined that uh, we would have negative three there because it's zero minus three. But if this distance is three, then we can figure out what this point is right there. Because if that's 70 and the gap between them is three, then this must be 73. And then over here, we know that this whole distance is five, but we also know that this distance is three. So therefore five minus three gives us two. In other words, this would be the uh, value uh, for that net line. So this would be two. So now that this uh, plane is uh, all fully labeled, we can go ahead and answer the critical point question. So the first thing we want to ask is, what's the most I can make? That's the highest value you could earn. And again, the trick is to follow the net line, which is represented by line number four. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. So what's the highest value that your position reaches? Remember, this is zero. So anything above is gain. Anything below is loss. So what's the highest positive? that your net line reaches? We already have the answer, it's two. I can also tell you from what price range that occurs. This occurs for any price that's greater than 75. It's right there. For any price greater than 75, you walk away with $2 profit. And that's exactly what I have right there. So the next question is, well, what's the most I can lose? Again, this is all on our framework find me the lowest negative. Remember, this is zero. So these are gains, these are negatives. So if you're asking me for maximum loss, uh, I'm looking for the lowest negative value that's possible. And you can see it's right there. It's minus three. And I can also tell you at what price range it occurs for any price less than 70. That's exactly what we have right there. And then finally, the break even point. In other words, at what spot price, what would the spot price have to be for you to break even, i.e. make no profit at all. It's right there, 73, right? So our profit would be zero if the spot price was 73. So then when would you construct a bull spread? And again, ladies and gentlemen, I, I wanna eliminate any guesswork. There's no need for guesswork. The answer is in our framework. The answer is in our framework. Watch how straightforward this is. That's the zero mark. This is gains, that's losses. When do you start making profits? Right? When do you start making profits? When the spot price is greater than 73. That's exactly what we got right there. So when would you construct the bull spread? If the price is more than 73. Because that's when you start making a profit. At 73, it's zero profit. So anything above 73, you start making profit. Now, in part two, we're asked to calculate profit for specific prices. And that's a little different from part one. Part one says, uh, you know what, uh, what are our critical points? That's just three. What's the most you can make? What's the most you can lose? And what's break even? That's just three points, right? 
but we want to know what our profit and loss would be for various outcomes for this spot price and that's exactly what we're going to do here now the framework for profit calculation is very generic to calculate profit we just know what we started off with and what we ended up with so very quickly and and you can use this for any investment not just these option strategies so suppose we started with 100 and we ended up with 120 if i ask you what profit did you make it'd be 20 the difference now we already know what the initial value of the bull spread is we calculate it it would cost us three dollars to set it up so that's it v0 is done we know exactly how much we paid for the strategy. So to calculate profit, step one, we need to calculate what the value or the terminal value of the position is. And then once we have that, step two just finds the difference between the terminal and the initial value. So let's do a few, let's do a few. And the other thing I'll remind you is that the bull spread is really a combination of long call A and short B. So that's all we got to do. We got to enter the intrinsic value of both these options. And the other thing I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, long positions, you would have a positive exposure towards, whereas a short position, with a short position, you would have a negative exposure. So that's the only thing you have to remember. Okay, we're ready. So what would our profit be or loss? if the spot price was 60 on expiry day well let's have a look uh, first let's look at the long position you have in call a call a had a strike price of uh, 70 right so 60 minus 70 that'd be out of the money so therefore the value for long a is zero and how about the short b so with short we've got the negative done so now that's out of the way so now just tell me about the intrinsic value for call B. Well, call B has a strike of 75. So if the spot price is 60, no one's going to pay $75 to buy an asset that's worth 60. So again, the intrinsic value will be zero. Well, then what's your profit? So if the terminal value for the bull spread is zero, what is your profit? Well, here's the terminal value, but I paid three bucks for it. So I lose $3. Now I want to show you something, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go back to my visual framework and I'm going to show you that we already knew in advance that uh, at spot price 60 the loss would be minus 3 and here it is here it is we already determined we already determined that at any price less than 70 you're losing money precisely you're losing three dollars and a spot price of 60 would definitely be within that range so see how much I like these frameworks. Uh, let's pick another price. What if the spot price at uh, expiry is 74? Same exercise, ladies and gentlemen. Find the intrinsic value for uh, call A before. What would be the intrinsic value for uh, call B? Remember, it's a short position. Well, this uh, call B would be out of the money. So therefore, the combined position is worth four. So what's your profit? Well. I ended up with four, but I paid three, so my profit is one dollar. And then finally, if the spot price is AD, do the same exercise. So the intrinsic value for the long position is 10. The intrinsic value for the short position would be five. It's calculations right there. So therefore, your terminal value would be five. And then, um, you know, if you subtract what you paid for it, you walk away with a two dollar profit. Uh, but again, I want to show you that uh, we already would have known this answer. So spot price 80. Let's go have a look. Actually, it's right here. Maximum gain at any spot price that's greater than 75. But I just want to show it to you anyways. So if that's 75, I'll plug 80 there. And we've already reached the ceiling for profit potential. And it's $2. Okay, part three, suppose uh, that the delta for the 70 call is 0.3 and the 75 call is 0.24, and we're asked to find the delta for the entire position, which is the uh, bull spread. Now remember what delta measures. Delta measures how sensitive the position is to changes in the price of the underlying asset. 
So the way I like to do this is uh, I'll just say, okay, well, what are the components of the bull spread? Right? So uh, we got the long 70. It's right there. And notice it's long, so there's a positive in front. And for the 75, that's a short position. That's why I have the negative there. And I would just enter the delta for the 75 call. It's 0.24. And then that's it. That's it. And then uh, just combine them. So 0.3 minus 0.24 is 0 0.06. So what this would indicate is, um, well, it's right here. So if you look at the summary, let's look at some bullish positions you can have. And we're going to look at the delta and then determine how much the value will change by if the spot price appreciates by $1. So if you remember, these are all bullish strategies. So you think the price is going to go up. So what's the plain vanilla strategy if you think the price of a stock is going to go up? Just buy the stock. Just buy the stock. No, no bells and whistles. Just buy the stock. Well, the stock would have a delta of one. In other words, the stock would have a one-to-one -one sensitivity with itself. So if the spot price went up a dollar, your account makes a dollar. Well, what's the other thing you could do if you're bullish? You could just buy a 70 call, a call that's got a strike of 70, right? Call option is pays off when uh, you know the underlying price appreciates. What's the delta there? It's 0.3. So that means if the spot price appreciates by $1, that call only appreciates by 30 cents. And then finally, the bull spread. We determined, uh, so now you're offsetting the long 70 call with a short 75 call. So therefore, the resulting delta is only 0 0.06, which means now if the spot price appreciates by $1, the value of your bull spread will only appreciate by 6 cents. So therefore, clearly, a bull spread is a less aggressive take on a bullish outlook because if you were really bullish about the stock what would you do let me ask you this what amount would you like to make so if you are convinced that the price of the underlying asset is going to appreciate which choice would you pick i'll pick that one but what if you're a little unsure because ladies and gentlemen let me show you something let me show you something Mm hmm that makes all the difference now because what if the price of the underlying asset drops then this would lose more but this would lose less and that's why I keep referring to bull spread as a less aggressive a bullish outlook